Guys, this is the LSU Players Show on Fan Media Network. So, all right, guys. Hey, great to see you guys, man. Welcome to the show. This is the Player Tiger Players Show. Real talk. Let's talk about you guys a little bit. All right. And so, I first want to start off with Eddie Fuller from Leesville, Louisiana. He was a tailback for LSU from 1985 to 1989. He was drafted by the Buffalo Bills in the fourth round, 100th pick. He was a four-time AFC champion and also a four-time Super Bowl participant. Um, Eddie is currently working in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the state of Louisiana, as a uh, hospital representative, pharmaceutical representative for a pharmaceutical company. I'll let him expound on that if he would like. And uh, Eddie has a wife, and I want to say two daughters, if I'm correct. And uh, he was a humongous leader for us, uh, us three. When we got there, Mike got there, played an extra year with him, but Chad and I were able to just play one with him. And in my opinion on Eddie is, he was probably one of the first guys that I met at LSU that kind of took me under his wing. And he was really soft-spoken, but he was a warrior on the field, man. He was a true all-purpose back. He was one of the guys who could catch the ball out of the backfield. He could run the ball and he could block. And he was he was really an invaluable force in that backfield. Um, Eddie also, if 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 uh, history is correct and we remember this, was the the participant in the uh, LSU Auburn game where Tommy Hodgson and him connected uh, on the big touchdown that that rocked the Richter scale. Uh, uh, on the at the at the ge uh, geology building in the, in the geology building uh, that uh, that w was 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 we were able to give it the name the earthquake game from that and so Eddie is famous and he's one of our <laughs> tremendous leaders that we had and I'm um, happy to have you here Eddie um, and man, anything you want to say how you doing what's going on in Baton Rouge how's the weather what's shaking man. Well, no, it's good to be here, Harold, man. And it's, you know, I hadn't seen you in a while as well. So um, everything's going for, well. I think everybody is, uh, you know, right now we've got that the COVID, uh, that the virus that we're all dealing with. But other, other than that, man, you know, everybody's healthy and safe and um, just trying to, uh, you know, just trying to get this 2020 uh, in a rearview mirror. That's right, man. I agree. Same here, man. Same here. Um, the second person I want to introduce is uh, Michael Donnell Garrett from, <laughs> <laughs> from the Woodlands, Texas. Or as he says, I'm from Detroit, boy. What up, though? <laughs> so <laughs> Mike Garrett was a tailback initially and ended up moving to the flanker position, which is now like the Z position. But Michael was another key piece to our team. He, he always was there when you needed him. And honestly, I think his senior year probably was mo his most productive year. And unfortunately, he, he had a, a, a career ending um, injury to his ACL. But I can remember Michael uh, on several occasions making huge catches that moved the chains. And we were able to, to continue the drives on offense. Um, he attended McCullough High School in the Woodlands, Texas. He was all American. He was a blue chipper. And uh, man, great to have you, Mike. Man, what's going on? Man, I'm glad to, glad to be here. You guys are my brothers. And yep. what, people, what people always tell us, your unfortunate entry against Texas A&M back in 1991, you right. had actually hurt your knee. And Absolutely. as a result, we had lack of productivity from the tight end position. So Curly right. Hoffman, head coach at the time at LSU, brought me to his office and said, Mm -hmm. We need to put a ball. We're, we're not getting a lot of productivity from the tight end position. So we're going to go with a three wide out set. And we want you to be the W in that, that a wide receiver at LSU. Obviously, starting my career off as a tailback, played three years of archery, two years with Curly Holman. But, uh, you know, aside from uh, some of the games that we didn't win, I always treasure the rich relationships that I have uh, established and maintained throughout the years. And a little lanyard for you as well, uh, Eddie, uh, my red shirt freshman year, he and I were actually roommates when we would travel on the road. So that's what we came close to. 
Absolutely. So you got, you got, you got, man, you got the best of both worlds, man. You got the yeah. best of both worlds. So the next person is very near and dear to my heart. Um, we signed uh, in 1989. This young man was an exceptional high school quarterback, probably one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. He is, he attended University Lab High School on the campus of LSU. And he was a parade all he was he was he was a golden boy, man. He was he was a parade all American. He was an academic all American uh, in high school. And he he pretty much he, he he ran, he passed, and he punted. And he also played basketball. And his name is Chad Luke. He was our quarterback, and he's my quarterback in my heart for life. And I tell you, man, he's one of my best friends. You know, I've called him in the good and the bad, and he's always been there for me. And um, a little bit about his LSU career, you know, it angers me a little bit about it a little bit because I thought he should have been our quarterback from day one, from, from 1990, we registered in 89. I thought he should have been the guy from freaking day one. He did everything right. He was smart, he was charismatic, he knew how to get the huddle together, and he knew how to find Harold Bishop when he needed it. And so he was my guy, man, he was my guy. Uh, we had, you know, unfortunately Chad had we had two head coaches, Mike Archer, as well as Curly Hallman. And if I can remember correctly, we probably had four or five offensive coordinators. And and to say that, man, you know, that tells you the kind of guy he is. And the next thing I'm gonna say about him is he is now, he not only was an academic All-American in high school, he was also a four-time academic All-American, five-time maybe, academic All-American in, uh, in college. So his last year, Chad, I'm gonna read this correctly, he was a GTE All-American District 6. I'm not sure what that means. That's like over my head. That's a class I couldn't take. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> and so now Chad resides in Baton Rouge with his family, and he is an orth orthopedic physician um, with the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic, uh, which works specifically with the Louisiana State University LSU football team and, and other athletic teams. So guys, great to see you. Great to talk, talk about all this good stuff. I'll introduce myself because I, I skipped myself, but my name again is Harold Bishop. I'm from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I went to Central High School in Tuscaloosa where I was an All-American, All-State, one of the top tight ends in the nation all that good stuff and man got recruited by Alabama and all the good stuff and man I took one visit to Baton Rouge, Louisiana and that's all it took man. The food, the pretty sights, the eye candy, man I tell you what it was a great visit and I ended up in Baton Rouge. <laughs> so I tell you um, my career also went forward and I was able to get drafted in the third round of the 19. Uh, 94 draft. I was the 69th pick in the third round of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I uh, ended up playing six years, one year in the World League. Um, came back and finished my career after the World League in Pittsburgh, and I got this sweatshirt. I'm rocking this sweatshirt because we're we're undefeated now, and man, I'm rocking it, man. Go Steelers! So let's get into some talk about what's going on, the current state of LSU as a as a system from top to bottom uh some of the things that are going on with the school if you guys can expound i'll let you guys decide who wants to talk first about it and also the state of athletics and what we're going through and the transition we're going through after winning uh a national championship going 15 uh 15 and 0 and having a, a quarterback that was the first round pick of the two 2020 draft so let's talk about that a little bit um, you guys can step up to the mic and talk. Whoever wants to to, to, to start, um, just just speak up and and, and uh, give me some real talk. Let me let me let me take the ladder as far as the LSU football team. Wow! I, and I say three things. You guys remember Aaron Rodgers? And I want you to remember this. Aaron Rodgers. Relax. R E L A X. Relax. Right. It's gonna right. be fine. The second thing is patience. Excuse, excuse me, manage your expectation. The third thing is patience. Why do I say that? From the 2019 National Championship team, and you guys 
heard this before, so I'm going to just be a little bit redundant if I may. LSU lost a total of 31 players. 14 players got drafted in the NFL. Five were first-round picks. You had losing Joe Brady, co-offensive coordinator. You had losing Dave Aranda, defensive coordinator. And you also throw in COVID-19, no spring football, new staff members, Bo Pelini, Scott Linehan. And this is what you get. This yeah. is what you get. It's not an excuse. It's reality. So again, Absolutely. I tell my LSU family, I tell my LSU friends, relax, manage your expectations, and have patience because there's no team in America not named Alabama that can overcome something like this. Right, we will, right. We will, we will get back. But we had a lot of attrition in key areas. And that, like I said, this is what you get. We'll be fine. This is a mulligan year, pandemic year. We'll learn from it. We'll recruit up. We'll be fine. And we'll get back to LSU football uh, back in uh, 2021. Well, I tell you, Mike, that's a very analytical view of it. And it's really a great way to look at it. You know, and I can compare it to you know, when I can say when 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 you were a freshman, Michael, you guys ended up going to the SEC championship game and and um, not the SEC championship game. I'm sorry, you guys won the SEC in 1988. Yeah. Uh, Beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa. I was at the game as a recruit for Alabama, and I can remember that great game. Get great game. David Brown died, kicked the winning field goal, and the rest is history. Um, however, you know, when Chad and I got to school, you know, we we came in to a, a program that also lost a lot of key players. Mm -hmm. And we ended up being redshirted our, our freshman year. And, and then we were really pushed into starting roles as freshmen, uh, redshirt freshmen. And we were we were really good players, but a freshman or a redshirt freshman is still a freshman. Right. And so until you get your cleats dirty and you get some scratches on your helmet, man, you know, you, you, it's going to be what it is. Absolutely. And, and and so, you know, I, I sympathize with them. You know, I would love to see them play better. However, you know, until we get where we need to be as a complete program, again, top to bottom, president, system, athletic director. And when I say president, system, athletic director, the next thing right under that, is LSU football, period. Yeah. And so and so it starts at the top and then it rolls down. And so we gotta get some things together. And again, you know, I think we'll bounce back, but you know, the proof is in the pudding. What are we gonna do to fix this? We haven't seen it transition week to week. But again, yeah. it was a short, it was a short training camp, it was a short uh, spring, and and then we, we, we we're playing football in a in a pandemic and it's a contact sport. And it's a contact virus. So, well, you and, know. And, and you also had key opt outs. You had Jamar Chase, beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. Most recently, Absolutely. you had Chris Marshall. I mean, Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. I mean, it's, Absolutely. It has, real talk, it's man. reality, not excuses. Yeah, real talk, Mike. Real talk. Chad, man, your thoughts, man. Your thoughts, Chad. Well, I think you guys are, are kind of hitting the nail on the head about the youth of the program. I mean, when you look at, at who we lost and the team you fielded for the first game this year, I mean, it was an entirely different team. I mean, and especially on the offensive side of the ball, you lost all of your key weapons from last year. And Harold, you're exactly right. A freshman is very different than a senior. So especially at the quarterback position, you know, what they're doing now with Max and TJ kind of going back and forth, that's difficult in the best of circumstances to do, especially now that they're both freshmen, it makes it even twice as hard. So I think, you know, I agree with you guys that there's gonna have to be some time uh, because these guys have to develop. You saw a little bit of that in the A&M game on the defensive side. I guess the best way to say that is the defense played with a little more, little more football acumen, a little more sense, or you know, looked more like what we would expect from that kind of defense. The other thing that's hard is expectations in, in LSU football land, so to speak. You came off the best year that I personally have ever seen in college football and really lightning in a bottle. I mean, I've, I've, I haven't seen a team like that ever. So you can only really go down a little bit from that. So, and, and unfortunately, as far as it seems to have fallen, I don't think it's as far as people want to believe. You got some very good players on both sides of the football, and I think you'll see those guys regroup. Well, offensively, I'd like to see a little more of the type and style 
of offense we had last year. But, you know, these guys are going to have to grow and develop to be able to do that. So it's not going to be an immediate thing. Right, right, right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I got a, I got a specific question, and you can answer it how you want to answer it. So, mm-hmm. of the of the two of the two quarterbacks that we currently have rotating in and out, when I look at them, I see a kid that is playing um, really at a high level. So when I look at T.J. Finley and I look at him, I look at his intangibles, his footwork, his his ability to get the ball in and out of his hands and his arm strength. In my opinion, he is the more polished of the two right now. However, Johnson is also a very, very good quarterback. But, you know, Chad, you went through this. You played the quarterback, you know, uh, carousel. And at some point, you have to get one guy and stick with him. And, and, And that's my point. You know, Finley, Johnson, whoever it may be, Let's go with the guy. We are. We have two more games maybe left. We got to establish the guy. And if they need to fight it out in the spring, let them fight it out in the spring. But we need an identity right now, in my opinion. We need an. Well, we need a. We need a football identity. Go ahead. Yeah, I 100 percent agree with you on that. I, I'm not a fan of rotating quarterbacks. I think it, it it causes your offense to kind of get out of sync in the course of a game, and that's not really what you want. I agree with you. TJ has all the tools. But back to the freshman situation, and some people may argue where he's played a season, so he's not truly a freshman. Making decisions is, I think, the biggest thing. And that's the hardest part of, of playing quarterback at this level is the mental aspect of it. The physical, th- he can go out on the field with any of us right now and make every throw you ask him to make. But it's making decisions in real time, quickly, and with confidence to where he is delivering the football where he needs to deliver it, and he's not second guessing, and he's not really not necessarily not thinking, but he's playing and he's reacting to things. And I think he would get that. And I, I agree with you, Harold. I, I think they should probably just pick one of these guys, if it's TJ, if it's Max, and just go with them. I think that'll give the team a little more confidence going forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, absolutely. TJ is extremely physically gifted, but I got to be totally uh, transparent with you. When I'm watching that second game, and he dropped back, man, he didn't look decisive in his decision making. That, that's and, that's exactly what I'm talking about. He's yeah. not making decisions and, and at this level and what he's doing, if you notice what Joe did last year, he was making decisions, but he was making decisions on time. Yeah. The ball was coming out on time. Very there wasn't quick. a lot of hesitation. Right. And, you know, some of that's coaching, but some of that's just maturity. Some of that he's yeah. just gonna have to develop. And he may right. not get that for another year or so. But but I think the coaching staff having confidence in one of those guys going forward will help them tremendously on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, again, again, the maturation process can, can sometimes be in a year, it can be six games, or it could be, you know, you, you don't play for three years and you end up playing you know, um, your senior year. And so, again, again, you know, my point is we, we have to, again, figure out how we're going to be a consistent team. I think right now LSU is good at being inconsistent. And um, in saying that, you know, I'm just looking for not necessarily, obviously I'm looking for wins, but again, I'm looking for consistent play, offense, defense, special teams, and I'm looking for a consistent effort from the kids. You know, um, I can say this, going back to our, our careers at LSU, they were tumultuous, but I cannot remember, maybe maybe a couple of games, I would say Florida State and maybe Florida. Um, uh, 90, I would say 91, Florida State, and or 90, Florida, Florida State, and, and uh, probably 93, Florida, that we just got beat down. Okay, but when we were there, we were in every game. We just had, and me and you talked about this a little uh, a little uh, earlier, Chad. We just had, you know, mistakes, little mistakes, little things that that we could have tweaked in our techniques, in our pre- preparation, and also the coaching staff could have tweaked. Sometimes we didn't make the adjustments. Sometimes we might have been the wrong dog on defense. Sometimes we just probably needed to throw it to the dog on tight end down the middle. <laughs> the <movie laughs> so, you know, so, that sounds like with you, that was always the answer, right? It was always. Hey, Chad, you were always open. Always open. 
I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. i and, and, you know, those are yeah. the kind of things that just take a little time. You know, you alluded to no spring practice and other things. Take time to develop that stuff. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Mike, what do you think about the, the tight end position at LSU right now? What do you think about the young man that's playing tight end right now? He's a he's a, he's a Kyle Pitts clone. Kyle Pitts is a, the tight end. They, they flex him out at Florida. Yeah. And he's almost – I and, and you need mm -hmm. to compare anyone because everyone has unique talents. But you right. look at a profile – that almost identically mirrors each other. And yeah. he can he can do everything. He can catch right. the ball. He can right. be a, a inline blocker. Right. He's got great hands. He seems to have a pretty good feel of the game. And he's only grown and developed as the season pro has progressed. Right. So the, the, the future is extremely bright for him. But as we collectively have all said and agreed, I mean, it takes game time minutes to get that, 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 that Absolutely. experience. What people yeah. don't what people don't realize, and what I try to explain to people, you, they don't understand the crowd noise, the the vernacular, what you're trying to process. That is that is that is uh, that's a lot for right, someone right, young right. to process, and it right. gets quickly. Right. You have to do it with speed. Very it's got to be done very quickly. quickly. You know? and, and it kind of goes back to Taz's point, where he said, you know, you as a quarterback, you know, it has to be in sync. And so I can remember playing against my our sophomore year, Chad, playing against the University of Georgia, and I dropped the key pass. But doggone, man, like two series before, you were in the game and you were throwing darts in a different, at a different velocity, in a different way that Jesse Daigle threw the ball. Jesse Daigle was a good quarterback, but you threw a ball that I could catch, that I was comfortable with. You and I threw and caught most of the time in practice. You got most of the reps, you know, and we were in that quarterback carousel. We were probably trying to play a number one offense and a number two offense. And we went from playing with Coach Archer for playing 80, 80 snaps a game. Yeah, and sure, so, sure. you know, you know, it, on, in that game, again, we were on the goal line. If I would have caught that pass, we probably would have had a chance to win that game. But I can remember, man, somebody else came in the game. I guess they wanted Jesse because he was a runner, but hell, you were a runner too. And man, the ball was so doggone hard, man. I ended up knocking it with my knee and went through the doggone field goal. <laughs> so, so man, that just tells you what you said is right. You know, you have to you have to practice, you have to get game snap with you, who you're going to be playing with on a daily basis. And, and I think that's why Joe was so good last year. He bought those guys together when he first got there. And again, we, if you can remember, he didn't have all the great success initially. It was after he went through a season where he had his ups and downs and Correct. they came together and they got their synergy together and yeah. we developed an offense right. that had an identity. To host a player show or appear as a player on a player show, simply create a profile on Fan Media's iOS app or website. Select your teams and make a short intro video on your phone. Show hosts, reporters, former players, and superfans can use our Get Verified feature and make an intro video as well. And our mobile newsroom staff will reach out.